Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm super excited to have you here. We're gonna dive straight into your full moon in Aries reading. We're gonna look at how this full moon is affecting the energy around you and your energy. Um, again, any guidance that we have, we're gonna finish things off with the Power of Surrender card because the full moon is an awesome time to uh, surrender those things that are ready to be let go of, ready to be released. Um, I do wanna just start my reading by thanking um, those of you who regularly watch my channel, who write such beautiful, thoughtful, insightful comments, leave emojis, hearts, I appreciate it all. Um, and those of you who have subscribed, who like, who share my videos, I am deeply touched by all of your support and I just want to say thank you so much. To those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. Now let's dive in. Keep in mind that this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave the rest. For Pisces, please, Spirit, what does Pisces need to know in their highest and best good? Oh, wow, Pisces. All right, you guys are getting the new moon in Leo. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Wow. Okay, Pisces. Okay, I'm I all right. I'm feeling a little bit of of an energy of This is really interesting. It's like there may be a situation that you're worried about or that, you know, it's like, it's giving you a lot of concern. It's weighing heavy on your soul, on your mind. It's sort of, you know, when your thoughts drift, it's sort of like they go to this place or maybe you're even having trouble like getting relief from thinking about this. Some of you, it depends, like we're all on a spectrum, right? So I'm totally getting that nothing will come of this, okay? Um, this isn't, it, it isn't, it's like, I, I know I've said this many times on the channel, but they have done studies, right, where they've had people write their worries down in a notebook for five years. And on the fifth year, they give them back their first notebook to read. And the people literally were laughing. They could not believe, uh, you know, the things that, that were consuming them, the things that were worrying them at the time. And... Um, you know, they, they either had forgotten they happened altogether or they couldn't believe that they were so worried about it because it turned out to really be nothing. That's this energy. And I, I have been getting this energy for some time in your readings of, you know, not allowing yourself to be distracted by the, the drama, the low vibe energy around you, you know, people doing what people are going to do. It's like, just let them. Don't worry about it. Don't give them your energy. Uh, there is something here with the confidence is a key to su your success or it, confidence is your key to success. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and this expect powerful change. It's like you're working on something and it's like you haven't seen the results yet or there is even possibly a shift in your energy that has happened or is happening or it's something that you are working on currently like it's something that you have been heavily focused on I feel like or even learning about or even you know working toward and it feels like this is the thing like don't focus on the things that you're worried about that drains your energy it wastes your powerful now your right now is the only moment that you can do anything with your past has already happened you can't do anything to change it or to go back and do it a different way you can't do that that's off limits our future has not happened yet. By getting too far in the future, or too focused on tomorrow or the next day or the day after that or a month from now or a year from now or five years from now makes us very, very anxious. And that's a very draining energy and it doesn't help. The best thing that we can do for our past and for our present and for our future is be present now because now we can launch the things that will be of use to us in the future. We can be 
the 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 Pisces now that is of the greatest help and the greatest benefit to future Pisces. So our future Pisces will look back on the Pisces of now and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, my today is better because you did that then, you know? And so it's our highest and best and most productive use of this time. And I'm really getting that so strongly in this reading. It's like, don't worry about things that are not in your control and things that can only affect you if you engage in it. You know, a lot of times, like, especially if you're worried about something going on with someone in your environment, which is typically what we do worry about, um, you know, it's probably not in your control. And it's probably something that just has to work itself out. And the, the least amount of energy you give to that situation, the, the least it will affect you. You, you, are, you. you have an opportunity to take an empowered position here. And if it does present a challenge, if it does present an obstacle, if you look at that like, well, it's my teacher or I will benefit from this, um, or if I can navigate this from my highest and best space, I will surely benefit from it. You will benefit from it. So I do think that you're going to get some powerful results from your present moment if you just really focus on staying in it and not getting distracted by worries, by anxiety about the future and by other people's drama, you know? It feels like if you just stick to your plan, you stick to your vision and you use the present moment to pay into those things, there's gonna be a big, big, big payoff coming, okay? Um, and possibly even you do have the time frame of the new moon in Leo, which is, you know, next July, August time. There may also be something that you decided to manifest around the, this July, August time, um, around Lionsgate even, if you guys remember what you were thinking about at that time, um, Leo season. There may be something here that you have been working on and it's like, just stay focused on it. Just stay working on it. Do not worry about all these things like, or even things that even feel like a threat to whatever that is. It's like, don't worry about it. Nothing will come of that situation. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You have trust right here and self-love. Yep. This is, I, I am totally like. Pisces, pull it in, call your energy home. You know, this is that moment of just whew, really being at your highest and best, really trusting the universe and really loving yourself, believing in yourself, having confidence in yourself. You guys are getting a six here with this self-love even. I'm also getting from this card, there may be people who are observing some kind of transformation that is taking place within you or some kind of, you know, it, it's like, it may have been where you were not making a lot of noise or you were not calling a lot of attention to yourself or you were just sort of saying self-contained and you may be getting braver and braver. You may be like stepping out more and more and there is at least one person, if not more people, that are kind of noticing this. Um, I, I feel like the universe really just wants you to trust the situation and trust yourself and believe in yourself and call your energy home and don't be putting it out in places where it can't do any good. Prioritizing yourself. Yeah. You know, we all have a little bit of a broken record that plays in our mind until we become aware of it and until we let it go, until we release it, until we pick up the needle and put it back on the stand, you know, and turn off the record player. <laughs> um, and, you know, there is this energy of, you have resilience here, um, which is saying burn away the past. And you have this flashover, it's all in your head. 
for whatever reason, this card, this resilience is a 27. I am a 27 nine life path. There may be some of you who are 27 nine life path for whatever reason. I just saw that flash like 27 nine life path. Um, if you don't know what your life path is, you, you get it by adding up all the numbers singularly of your birth date, all of them, you know, and like, for example, um, someone born on January 1st of 2011, okay, would be, um, one plus one is two plus two is four plus one is five plus one is six. Okay. Um, I don't know. That was kind of a bad example, but hopefully you get it. There are a lot of tutorials online, I'm sure too, if you, if, if my explanation isn't great for you. Um, but it, that will give you your life path number and then you can look up what your life path is. So mine is a 27 that reduces to a nine. So I'm a 27 nine life path. So, um, it's very informative. It can really help you, uh, to know what your life path is. So I don't know. I'm just feeling really guided to do that, to say that to you for whatever that is. Also, you have this 11 and I'm getting like one, one, like this can also be symbolic of being on your particular life path or being like, this may be confirmation for you about a decision you're making or a choice you're making. I, I don't know. Um, but take it as it resonates. If it interests you, uh, be curious about it. Um, so this is talking about, okay, it says resilience, burn away the past, and then you have flashover, it's all in your head. And so like I was saying, there's like this record, oftentimes it's like, it, it, it can be things that people have said to us, things that parents have said to us, almost always it's unkind, critical things, right? I think I've told this story a lot on this channel too, probably about this guy who, um, when he was like in fourth grade, he came very, very close to winning the spelling bee. And he was like, it was like the greatest day of his life. He was so happy with it. Right. Um, and he considered that one of the best days of his life. And then he had this experience in, I think it was like seventh grade and he and one of his enemies were trying out for the same part in a play and he did not get it. His enemy got it. And he replayed over and over again, like, when his mind would drift, he would frequently drift to that moment when he didn't get the play and that having to live watching that other guy go to the play practices, be in the play, you know, talk about the play, you know, like having to deal with all that. And um, he was talking to someone about it and they were like, well, what was the best day of your life? And he recalled the spelling bee and he's like, do you go back to that day? Do you replay that day in your head too? And the guy was like, no. No, I never do. I, I don't, I don't like ever think about it. <laughs> and that's very telling of human nature and, and the human mind and the human psyche. It's like we hold on to a lot of the rough stuff, a lot of the tough stuff, a lot of the critical stuff. And we let go of the stuff that would be very self-affirming, the stuff that would be like, oh yeah, of course this is going to work out for you. That worked out for you. That worked out for you. That worked out for you. And instead we hold on to all the times that didn't work out for us and go, well, it might not work out because you know, that happened, that happened, that happened. And it's like, we always have a choice. We always have a choice of how we're going to handle our mental body and how, you know, if we're going to let it control us or if we are going to take the reins and control it, you know, my friend who's a really amazing psychic says, your mind is like a puppy. You have to train it. And so the more you say to yourself, you know, I'm not carrying that around with me anymore. Or I'm not going to let that affect me. Um, you know, and it's not so much resistance as it is observation and release. The more times those thoughts come to you and you just observe them and let them go, the, the, every time they can't come up, it is an opportunity. It is not a punishment. It is an opportunity. Every time those thoughts come up. Because the more you practice just looking at it and going, huh, that thought came up. Wow. I don't know why I'm thinking about that right now. And then you just let it go and you just don't get attached and you just don't let it unpack and stay. Every time you practice that, you are gaining strength, you are gaining resilience. And it's hard, especially when there's been an injustice that's happened to us, something that someone has done to us that's extremely unfair. 
it is really hard to stop playing that narrative in your mind. It is really hard to come to a place of peace with that situation. But if you practice just when the thought comes up, looking at it and saying, huh, I'm thinking about that again. All right, well, let me let it go. Let me sit in the discomfort of it and let it go and release it and just wait until it goes away. It will go away. I promise you it will go away. And just breathe into it. Just let it be. Don't resist it. Don't stuff it down. Don't save it for another day. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Um, you know, and just recognize it's a thought. It's just a thought. It's just passing through. It's, it doesn't have any form. It doesn't have any permanence. It may feel like it, but it doesn't. You have the power to just let it evaporate, to let it vanish, to let it dissipate. Because the truth of the story is you're strong. You survived 100% of your worst days. You've survived 100% of the things that happened that weren't cool. You survived 100% of the time that your arch enemy, you know, got the part in the play that you wanted or whatever happened, right? You survived it. You made it through. That was the hard part. It, and it served its purpose. It taught you a lesson. You, it was a teacher for you. And now, now you've made it through to the other side. You're resilient. You've held on. You've persisted. You've made it. You know, you, you did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> you don't have to stay with this you know, energy of holding it down and being consumed by it. I know how hard it is. I've, I've been there. I've had to do it myself. I, 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 I know. But let me tell you, there's nothing more worthwhile than freedom from thoughts like that and feelings like that and people like that. All right, here we go. For Pisces, how is the full moon in Aries going to affect Pisces and Pisces energy? Please show us, Spirit. For Pisces. I'm using these cards. I, 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 I always feel like these cards are very special. Um, there, it's the Moon Child Tarot, and I don't use them very often, so I'm really happy to have them out here today. Holy mackerel, I feel like you just won the lottery, Pisces. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, wow, and wow. Okay, we've got the King of Cups, we've got the Ten of Pentacles, we've got the Six of Pentacles, and we've got the Queen of Pentacles. Holy mackerel. That's a lot of Pentacles. I'm going to go ahead and clarify this. I can't decide right now if you're the King of Cups or the Queen of Pentacles. Holy God, Pisces. This is, wow. Okay, Pisces, I think you're this King of Cups. I think someone has their eye on you. Pisces, holy moly. All right, either you are currently in a hermit place in your life or you have recently gotten out of it. This particular hermit phase in your life right the the major arcana i guess technically you could just go from the full to the world card and just do that once in your entire life the fool's journey but i feel like it's something that we sort of cycle through many times i i feel like um you know yeah I feel like it's a it's a kind of spiral staircase of growth that just sort of wraps around and, and, and comes back upon itself, right? 
Um, and especially with the Wheel of Fortune sitting here, it feels as though, you know, this isn't your first rodeo. This isn't the first time you sort of called your energy home or needed to call your energy home and regroup and figure out just exactly what is really important to you, just exactly what you want and to really focus on it. And this, this actually, this energy makes complete sense with these original Moonology Oracle cards. This may even be like something that happened in July or August or something where it's like you really honed in on your focus. You really started to see very clearly where you're going or what you want or, you know, have some kind of real truth or vision about, about the next step to take or, um, there's definitely some clarity here and it's definitely seeing seeing you know where you want to be or what your wish fulfillment is very clearly and kind of understanding what it's going to take to get there it's also a, this is some kind of healing journey this can be something that you're still on right um with a hermit and the king of cups it's you may have been hurt emotionally and this can be where it's like understanding yourself on a deeper level, taking a time out, right? To understand yourself on a deeper level emotionally to kind of get in a position where you feel like you are the master of your emotions. Your emotions are not mastering you. And there's some lesson here around like the choice. We Things happen in life, right? That where it's like, yeah, you know what? You're completely entitled to be absolutely gutted. You're completely entitled to just let this wreck you for a week, for a month, for a year. And you can choose that. But there is another choice that you can choose. And that choice is to say, okay, and, and especially with the Ten of Pentacles and the King of Cups energy, it's really making me feel like this is the choice that is being made or this is the choice that we're arriving at through this hermit energy and it's seeing something super clearly like yes i have this choice i can give in to this emotionally i can cry into my pillow every night i can feel really bad for myself i'm entitled to it what happened was not okay was not right you know i'm entitled to that feeling but like like even but I, oh God, woo, okay, um, but it's kind of like, where is that going to get me? Is that taking me closer to my wish fulfillment? Is that taking me closer to what I, how I envision myself? Is that taking me closer to the clarity I see as my wish fulfillment? Or is that taking me away from it? And if it's taking me away from it, what choice do I have? And it's almost like the universe is sending you a lifeline of, okay, you can choose to fight. You, you can choose to, and it's, and it's not even necessarily fight, but you can the fight the urge to do that, to completely give in, to completely let it consume you. And there's something here where energetically, it's like, I feel you're going to have some kind of opportunity or you have, there's things changing around you for sure. You've got the wheel of fortune here. So the, your luck is changing. Something is changing. Something is trying to change. Something, this feels like it is even changed through spiritual enlightenment, through seeing a bigger picture, through gaining some kind of clarity that makes you see something very, very, very clearly. The 10 of Pentacles is such an epic card to have here. The 10 of Pentacles in Rider Waite actually has the Tree of Life from the Kabbalah. And there's a lot of symbolism in the 10 of Pentacles of you know, what is happiness? You know, what, what is, you know, that feeling of complete stability? You know, it, we are kind of programmed through the commercials on TV, through our parents, through our grandparents, through life experiences, through society, through societal norms, through our culture to sort of believe that happiness comes from your car, your house, your perfect looking life, your perfect kids, your perfect dog, your perfect house, your perfect this, your perfect that. But when you are really tuned into life and living in the present moment, at least this is what I found. And like I say, not everything is true for everyone, you know, right? We're all very different, but 
you know, it is the, it is the moments, like, I, I'm just thinking right now about, like, different moments that have really made me very happy recently. And, um, I, I, like, the first one that comes to mind is I was at Disney World with my husband. We were walking through Epcot, and he made a joke, and it was so funny. I was laughing so hard. Um... And I love that he still makes me laugh after all this time and that we have the kind of relationship where we do laugh, you know, and where we are genuinely happy to be with each other. Um, and I, there was just this moment of real gratitude and just real joy and real happiness. And that's what the Ten of Pentacles suggests to you, is that life is full of these moments and we have to have the eyes and the presence to see them. They are not big things. They are not houses. They are not cars. They are not, they are not actually material possessions, even though we're talking about pinnacles. They are the moments that take our breath away. They are the moments where we realize how fortunate we are for the experience that we're having. They are the moments that, you know, I, like I, I oftentimes say, you know, I love to start my day. I have this tea kettle that I love, my tea kettle. I fill it with my water. I put it on the stove. I have a gas stove. I love the sound that the gas makes, you know, the clicking of the whatever that thing is. And then the, the gas, the, it turns to fire. And it, it just, it, there's something very primal about that. There's just something really amazing about that. And then, you know, now I pour tea. I used to make coffee in my, co my pour over coffee pot, but I've stopped drinking coffee and I just drink tea now. But I pick my mug and I have a whole bunch of mugs that I love and I get to pick my mug for my day. And then, you know, and my mugs are full of happy moments because they're typically souvenirs or gifts from friends or, you know, my family. Um, and so it's these little things and it, but it, all of those things like add up, that's the foundational moment of my day. It's a moment that I look forward to every day. And it's a moment that, you know, I used to overlook that I used to not see the importance in that I used to not, you know, let it take my breath away. Um, and now it's like, Oh, I just, the whole time I'm in that place where I'm making that I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my dog who's usually eating his food at the, you know, his breakfast at that time. I'm grateful for my stove. I'm grateful for my house. I'm great. You know, I'm just, I'm grateful for everything. And those are the everyday moments that stack up. And that's what the 10 of Pentacles is. It's that energy of stacking up the good stuff, holding on to the good stuff of, of, you know, kind of banking away the good stuff. And, you know, it's like I was telling you guys about that neurologist that, I mean, he worked with Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus and, and I was listening to him talk and, and he was talking about how he, you have to train your brain. Your brain is lazy. If you don't train it, your brain will just run amok on you. But your brain is also a really powerful tool that you can fine tune and that you can hone and that you can use to your your benefit and he starts his day every day by saying today is a great day it's gonna be an amazing day i'm so excited about today and then he finishes every day by going over hour by hour the good thing that happened in that hour so he's training himself in that moment to be looking for those things day in and day out to be looking for those pentacles that he can stack up and you know um I just, and, and he said, you know, even on my worst day, even on the day when my dad died and I, I went to bed and I was laying there and my, my brain automatically said, okay, what are the good things that happened today? And he was like, and I just wanted to say, not today, not today. Today was a bad day. And he was like, but my brain couldn't help but go back to that moment when the medic was talking to the nurse in the hallway and the way that these people treated my mother and the way that they communicated to her and the care with which they gave her and you know, da, da, da. and he was like, and so even that day, he was like, and when I ran back through the day, there were all of these little things that happened that were just beautiful and abundant. And so Pisces, it's kind of like, I feel you're, you're understanding some level of mastery that is attached to, you know, finding the abundance in your day, finding those moments of joy, creating those moments of joy, and kind of keeping your focus singularly focused on what you want, the outcome you want, on what you want to happen, on keeping this in front of you here. Um, and there's some clarity. And not only 
does the Ace of Swords talk about clarity, but it also talks about success and victory. Then you have this incredible energy of the Six of Pentacles, and God, I love these cards. Um, and the Six of Pentacles, you know, I talk about this, you know, sometimes we give a lot of love in a situation, or we give and we give and we give and we invest and we invest and we invest in something, and it never pays off. That you know, that person isn't capable of receiving our love or of giving us love back or, you know, um, that, that's, that situation or that whatever just never panned out. But we put all this energy and effort into it. And we think, oh, well, we just wasted all that. We just wasted all that time. We just wasted all that. And you know what it is? Um, it's energy. And you put that energy out there and you put that intention out there and you put that goodness and that peace of your heart and your soul out into the universe and it will come back to you with the six of pentacles this is talking about the way the universe always balance things out this is your karma coming back to you this is all those good acts all those positive things that you've been putting out there coming back to you the universe will balance it out it may not come from the place that you invested it it might not come back to you from that person but it will come back to you from the universe through the energetic balancing out of things right and you got this queen of pentacles here on the bottom of the deck and i do feel like this is someone who i feel like they consider themselves to be high value um i feel like they know their own worth i feel like they have standards i feel like they are mature they are um how do i want to say this um They are also really good at spotting the worth and the value in others. And there is something here where I feel like they, you have their attention or they, you have caught their eye. I don't think you're necessarily totally fully looking at them, but they're looking at you. And now keep in mind, we are all in different timelines. This person may not have come to your life yet, or you may now be looking at this person. But I feel like this person may have seen it in you before you saw it in them. With the Wheel of Fortune, things are working out for you. They are happening for you. And sometimes that's not really clear or evident on the surface, but it's kind of going on underneath. And this is that sort of energy of trusting, of knowing that things balance out and that things change, right? The one constant in life is that, that it changes, that we're not, nothing is permanent. We are not stuck. All right. For Pisces. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, so Pisces, okay. There's a decision coming in here, I feel. Either you're making the decision or someone around you is making a decision and it's leading to you to have a decision to make here. There's some communication. There may be some news coming in. There's something coming in here, okay? And it feels like you're having some kind of opportunity. This Ace of Swords is showing up again. And it's kind of telling me that for you, the answer comes in looking at how it aligns with this picture you're holding for yourself this clear vision you have for where you want your life to go and there's an element here of trusting yourself trusting the lessons that you've learned Trusting the experiences that you've had and the things that you've learned from those experiences that you are capable of really being strong in this decision, in this conversation, in this choice. 
you have the page of wands here so it feels like this is whether or not to accept a journey or to accept some kind of adventure this could be a relationship this could be a job offer this could be travel this could be a lot of things um with the seven of cups here this is very neptunian energy this is very much like well maybe i should look at all my options or you know um this can also be where an opportunity presents itself and immediately your mind goes into okay well it could be like this it could be like that it could be like this it could be like that and you know um the seven of cups is a very piscean kind of energy where it's just like i can i can imagine it being like this and like this and like this and like this and sometimes it can even be the energy of getting attached to outcomes but i feel like with the page of wands and the ace of swords sandwiching the seven of cups it almost feels like a moment where you recognize that you're doing that and you're able to let it go and you're able to hone in on how is this in alignment with the vision that I hold for myself? And and not get distracted by the opportunity itself, by the conversation itself. It could be that someone's coming to you and blowing a bunch of sunshine up your rear. You know, it could be that someone is coming in and, and almost even kind of trying to sell you a fantasy. And you're like, no, I see through that. Like it's tempting because it sounds so good, but like I also trust my gut. I also trust the lessons that I've learned you know, maybe it's love bombing, you know, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, you know, but it's like, you know, you can tell, you can see the difference. And with the seven of cups being here, it may even be that you have more than one option as far as what direction to kind of pursue or whether or, or adventure awaiting you. And it can be that like you test them all out on this theory of, is this in alignment with this this space that I found deeply or connected deeply to when I was on my own? You're definitely getting presented with an opportunity that you want. At least one of the things that are coming in as an option or an opportunity is something that you want. Jeez Louise Pisces. Queen of Swords with the Nine of Cups. Wow, with the Page of Cups. Someone may be making some kind of declaration. They may be coming in and really offering you their heart. They may be really coming in and apologizing or offering you something genuine and sincere. With a Page... Let me just see what's underneath that. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So underneath is the three of cups and then underneath that's the 10 of cups. Okay. So I feel like, you know, with a page, it's always kind of like, okay, how serious are you about this? You know what I mean? And it may be someone who's kind of, they are serious underneath it all. They are serious, but <clears throat> they're not they're building up to something. They're seeing how something unfolds before they jump in with the serious feet. They're, this is someone who's capable of being serious, but they what they're offering initially may be just something very authentic and sincere, but not they may not be revealing their their whole plan. And especially if this is that queen of pentacles from the very beginning that was kind of had their eye on you, Pisces, it feels a bit like this is someone who has kind of been watching you, someone who has observed you, someone who does see the value in you. And so, so they're willing to make you some kind of offer. But <clears throat> when you are a queen of pentacles, you do have standards and you do have this sense of, okay, well, let, I'm, I'm not going to offer them six pentacles to begin with and see if they give me six pentacles back. I'm going to offer them like a pentacle. And I'm going to see if they're capable of returning that pentacle. And then if they are, then I'll, I'll, I'll extend it again and again and again. You know, an earth energy or a pentacle energy is a much more slow moving energy. It's, it's a little bit at a time. But with this queen of swords, the, 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 the discernment comes from a sense of emotional contentment. So it is almost like listening to your gut or listening to yourself emotionally. How does this make me feel? 
you know, does, is this putting me on edge? Is this making me feel nervous? Is this making me feel like I need to protect myself and guard myself? Or is this making me feel like, you know what? I'm strong. I'm stable. I'm doing really good in my life. I can take this on. I can, I can see this through. Um, and then you have this page of wands, seven of cups, ace of swords, clarified by the 10 of pentacles again. Um, and this is, you know, is this in alignment, right? Is this, is this what I am building? Is this what, is this the legacy that I'm hoping? Is this the vision space that I hold for myself? Is it in alignment with that? Um, cause you know, I'm getting this yin and yang energy. It, it may be something that's so good, but you have to remember that that in the the light there is always darkness, and in the darkness there is always light, and so there's just this energy of regardless of whether this seems like, you know, the opportunity of a lifetime or not, there is this need to measure it with, you know, is this in alignment with my vision, my plan of success. Okay, you're getting the King of Swords now. <sighs> okay. Pisces, you have so many court cards in this reading, I feel like. King of Cups, King of Swords, Queen of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, Page of Wands. Okay. I feel like there's someone that doesn't necessarily want you to move on, <laughs> okay? And <clears throat> so this can be, um, we're dealing with swords here, a lot of swords. This can be someone who feels you're moving on energetically and is very connected to you in the 5D, you know, like they, they, they can... Um, you just may feel a sense of connection to someone from your past that's hard to sort of let go of. And it feels as though this person may be um, trying to kind of uh, affect you in that way. Again, your mind is a puppy. You have to train it. You know, you can, you can just say, no, I, I, I'm not letting other energies in. I'm very focused on myself right now keep calling my energy home. I'm not being distracted. I'm not taking on things that are potentially draining here. This could also be someone who just shows up out of the blue. Um, I really don't like the seven of swords, even though it pretty much came out in reverse and this ascending in reverse. It's the King of Swords here is sort of making me feel like someone who doesn't want you to move on or someone who doesn't want you to get too far away from them or um, like heal too much or um, succeed too much or, you know, I just don't know how to say it, but I think you know what I'm saying. Um, It could also be someone who's coming off very, very logical, very analytical, very non-feeling. Um, 
and they really do have feelings for you or they really do have kind of their sight set on you, but they're trying to act like they don't. I don't know. Either way, it feels like something, it feels more like some kind of interference in something than it does um, something super positive. Do you know what I mean? And it's going to be different for all of you, but it's almost as if this person may come forward and express their feelings for you or may do something to try, like if they feel you're getting away to try to prevent that. Or it's like, it may be someone in the environment, like you may start dating someone and this person really doesn't want you to date someone and they may, they may actually say something or try to get you sort of focused on some drama around something I'm not really sure in order to sort of take your focus off this or to distract you from this I just keep getting stay focused on what you want and ask yourself is this in alignment with that or not um, because this feels like a distraction that is kind of unnecessary like you don't need to you need to address it you don't even need to deal with it it's like just don't give it any energy and it will go away it will fizzle out it's this, you know, lightning is something in a heavily charged environment, but once that heavy charge goes out, the lightning stops. You know what I'm saying? And then you have the nine of wands, the knight of cups, the five of swords, and then you have this high priestess, the seven of pentacles, and the world card. And so this is really telling me, again, that, you know, don't let things get to you. This is this feeling of, you know, things around you or external to you may try to make you feel like you're defeated or may try to kind of disempower you or take your energy away or take the wind out of your sails. But with the nine of wands and the nine of cups, there's just this energy of persevering, of, you know, not getting distracted and not giving up on, you know, what it is that you're pursuing and keeping very focused. With the high priestess here, it's even saying, don't share your plans with other people. Don't be out there telling people, like if you're starting to date somebody or if you're doing this or you're doing that, this may be something that you want to keep to yourself. You may not really know the people in the environment, how they're really feeling about the situation. And it may take you by shock if you actually knew. Like there's somebody that, that may have feelings for you that's not telling you. And they may be trying to kind of sabotage the situation without even acknowledging that they actually have feelings for you. Or there may be somebody who, you know, a girlfriend who, or, you know, a guy friend who saw themselves dating the person that you're making the moves on, or you're making progress with, who doesn't really want to see you advance. I mean, it, it's something like that. It's something that's deceptive, that isn't coming at you through the front door. And it, it's wearing a mask, you know, it's somebody who's, they may look like your best friend, but inside they may be envious or jealous or they may have their own designs. It's just something where it's like Pisces, kind of keep your plans to yourself. With the Five of Swords, there's definitely some things in the environment that I feel like are trying to... Like, even if this is like a plan, right, to start your own business or to go back to school or to change your life in some way, it's kind of like you know, with that five of swords, it's just telling me that like people that you think might support you or might, you know, have your best interests at heart or something. It's like, maybe it's just around this particular thing, or maybe it's just around a lot of things. Like they, they sort of want to stop you before you go in that direction. I'm not really sure, but this with the high priestess, this is just like, Hey, keep it quiet. Don't, don't be talking about it. Don't be sharing about it and stay in your highest and best and listen to your intuition. With the seven of pentacles and the world card, this will end in time. You know, this, this is something where it's like, you know, just stay quiet and give it time. And all, this cycle or this interference or whatever this is, it will dissipate. It doesn't have the energy to stick around for a long period of time. And with the King of Wands on the bottom of the deck, I feel like this is like, be sure about what you desire. You can be because you came about it through this incredible energy here. And um, don't let anyone distract you from going for what you really want here, Pisces. Like, don't, don't let anyone plant anything in your head or, you know, um, make you feel like, oh, no, that, you know, I, I don't know. Even like that possibly 
you couldn't trust someone or it's like see for yourself don't trust other people's opinions of things so much right now yeah i saw the ace of pentacles it flipped over and then it flipped back over but it definitely wanted to be seen. Wow, you guys are getting justice and the emperor with the star on the bottom of the deck. You know, Pisces, this is just definitely uh, this energy of, you know, trust your decisions, sit in your seat of power, know that you're sitting on a good foundation. You arrived at where you're at and these decisions that you're making very, very, very solidly. Um, you know, it took you a minute. You did, you went about it the right way. You are seeing your wish fulfillment very clearly. You, any decision that you make that's in alignment with love, healing, hope, optimism, those kind of things, those, those decisions are going to really pay off for you. So it, it is really one about staying very focused on whatever this is that you're building, creating, making happen for yourself. Yeah. And this is you. Wow. This this is this is a powerful time for you Pisces. I mean, there's just no doubt about it with the cards that you're getting consistently. Um I do feel like you definitely have kind of a divine partner coming in and I mean, you got the Queen of Cups here on this this justice card and with the um Emperor, you are getting that clarified by the 2 of Pentacles in reverse. This is where you are strong enough, you are secure enough to choose out of love. Like there is, you know, fear is not really playing a role here. And when we, you are in a position where you are choosing out of love and you are making very solid choices and decisions that are very balanced and that really are non-emotional, but are, are in consideration of your truest kind of self, you know, um, everything comes together. It, your wishes come together. Temperance and the star card energy. It takes time, but it is coming together. It is coming together, Pisces. The temperance and the star, it's coming together. Your wishes, your dreams, it's like everything is coming together in divine timing. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Stay true to your decisions that you're making. Um, you know, stay true to yourself, obviously, and know that you are sitting in the driver's seat. You are sitting in a position of power and you put yourself there. You know, um, if you are not here yet, then this is where you're moving toward. But you're definitely, I feel like, calling in um, a divine partner. You're definitely calling in your wish fulfillment at this time. And it's definitely coming together for you. And, and you definitely have divine help. And you have the Wheel of Fortune, which is saying it is divine timing. So there's just a lot of positive energy here. And um, I actually think that I'm going to leave that reading there because that is pretty awesome. Um, and I'm going to pull today instead of pulling message cards for each element, I am going to pull a power of surrender card. So you may want to choose your moon sign or your rising sign or your Venus sign, whatever that is. Um, but this is just a message for you um, on the, the full moon energy. It's a great time to surrender those things that are no longer serving us. Okay. So here we go for Pisces. Do you, if you, with the water sign. So if you chose that you're getting surrender the drama no matter how emotionally charged the situation remain calm and don't contribute to the drama staying centered will help resolve the issue more clearly that has been coming through since the beginning of your reading and you can almost see that ace of swords energy right there i'm just getting to it's going to pass quickly it's going to pass quickly if you don't engage in it it will pass quickly it, it doesn't have a lot of energy behind it you have surrendered to receiving support and love if you're if this is for fire sign allow the love and support of others in rather than trying to handle everything yourself this can take the pressure off and simultaneously nurture you if you have an earth sign placement you're getting surrender procrastination now is the time to jump on a goal instead of putting it off taking action will attract success and if you're dealing with an air sign, you're getting surrender the habit of people pleasing. Speak your needs and be true to yourself. Focus on your happiness instead of always trying to make everyone else happy. Pisces, stay true to yourself. Stay on the path you're on and go get them. Like, I feel like you're unstoppable. Just don't get distracted by the noise that's around you, by the people or the, the things or the situations that are trying to pull your attention away. 
Um, and, you know, keep quiet and stay in your highest and best and, you know, channel that inner high priestess. And I feel like things are going to start materializing in a big, big way. You got the 10 of pentacles twice. All right, guys, this is what I have for you. Thank you all for your loving and sweet, kind comments yesterday that they were just above and beyond. And, um, and I hope this reading helps. I hope it brings peace and clarity. Until next time, guys, I send you off with all my love. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.